Uh, hello, everybody. Um, I'd like to welcome you to the neighborhood meeting. Uh, as of right now, there are, are no attendees, but there are people attending virtual. This is a virtual meeting. Um, it, is an, it is called neighborhood meeting, and it's about the zoning bylaw amendment, um, PZ 1522, Winfield West, 6A, 7A, Conklin Road condos. There's no civic address assigned yet, so that's what we referred to. So there is an agenda. There's introductions, um, a planning overview um, from the City of Brantford staff, the applicant and agent presentation. They will be speaking following my presentation on behalf of the city, and there will be public questions and comments. So first, I would like to introduce uh, Ward 1 Councillor Councillor Sakoli. Um, she's behind me, and I. my name is Blaine Yatabi. Uh, I'm the planner on this file, and also with us is Sean House. He's another planner. He's taking notes, and there's Dar Darlene Lombardi. She's helping run this meeting. Um, the agent is, and the applicant and owner, there's Cesar Patelli, who is working uh, as the agent on behalf of Empire Homes, which is the applicant. Um, Cesar is from Armstrong Planning, and he will be speaking later on behalf of the development. However, because this is a uh, public meeting, there is some rules of procedure that I, I would like to read into um, the record. So I'd like to remind members of the committee, staff, and our viewing public of the electronic participation of uh, virtual meetings. Virtual meetings are relatively new. So staff and delegates are reminded to keep their video and microphones off until requested by the moderator or by members of the committee. All rules for delegations under the city's procedural bylaw continue to apply. Further, in the event that a connection or service interruption occurs that affects quorum, we may recess the meeting for up to 15 minutes to regain, sorry, regain quorum. If a quorum is not achieved, the meeting will be adjourned. So the four, uh, full corporate policy 50 regarding electronic virtual participation in meetings is available online to review. So now I'd like to, um, I wanna provide an overview of the city of Brantford planning department's involvement in terms of policies relating to the zoning bylaw amendments. Um, Cesar Patelli of Armstrong Planning will explain more of the proposal in the site plan. I will go through my presentation regarding uh, policies and procedures for the city of Brantford and there is a hierarchy that starts with the Ontario Planning Act, which I will briefly explain and go into more detail regarding city policies. Can you start the presentation, please, Norris? Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay, so. The, this meeting will be also streamed on the town's YouTube channel and can be viewed virtually. The intention of this meeting is to gather comments and um, to consider them for the next planning committee meeting. Um, the Ontario Planning Act requires a public meeting, which will be the next two meetings mentioned below. So there will be, after the planning committee meeting, there will be, this application will go to council. So having a neighborhood meeting is not required by the act, but it is a, a city initiative. So this um, better facilitates and gives people and residents a chance to, um, to discuss the matters at hand. So uh, next slide, please. So the Ontario Planning Act is the guiding document that um, gives the direction for municipalities um, that they must follow for development. There are other important provincial documents that guide growth in Ontario provincial policy statements. They provide direction on land use planning and matters of provincial interest. Uh, following that, we have a place to grow, growth plan for the greater Golden Horseshoe that provides economic and community growth plan policies in an efficient manner to regulate growth. So then we have the city of Brantford official plan. It sets up policies for where growth can occur and why. And then we have the city of Brantford zoning bylaw 16090 and it sets up parameters of specific uses allowed for the official plan. Uh, next slide, please. And actually one more. 
So as you can see, this aerial photo, um, this basically the area highlighted in red is the area that is going to be rezoned. You can't see it on this map, but there is actually a faint green line that divides this into two, two sections. So um, both of these sections will be uh, rezoned. And um, as you can see from the aerial, you can look at the surrounding types of land uses. Um, to the north is a development that is currently being built. Um, to the to the north northeast is Assumption College. Uh, just just below there is Butcher Crescent, which is also a part of the same development. This development is being constructed in many phases. Um, so the, in the city of Brantford zoning bylaw, right now, both of these are zoned separately. Um, so basically you can go on to the next slide and actually one more slide. My, or no, one more. My apologies for being a little bit out of order, but I think it kind of explains better this way. So here we see um, there's two illustrations there. The one on the left is what is currently zoned. And as you, as you can see right now, uh, it's a little hard to read, but in the, in the hatched area is the, um, the parcel at hand in, uh, where this development is occurring and it is actually in two zones. So that little, that thin line there is HR1A, it's currently zoned. And then the other one is uh, R4A45, which is, um, site-specific zoning for this part of, uh, the, of Winfield West. So then you see the other uh, map there that shows each half, they're gonna be zoned, rezoned into one zone, which is R4A83. That's a, a numbered sequential uh, zone. That, that's just a, another amendment. And the purpose behind having uh, rezoning like this that is site specific. It allows the development to accommodate the, the types of uses and um, you know the differing setbacks and, and differing heights and all that that wouldn't be permitted um, with other zones. So therefore, a site specific zone has to be created. So um, this, re, like I say, this rezoning is required to permit the development of types of buildings. Um, and this will also be subject to a site plan control. So that's the, the reason in a, in a basic nutshell about why, why this is being rezoned. It's kind of unique in a way that there's one parcel being uh, rezoned twice. Um, actually, if you can go back, uh, please Norris, to the official plan slide, that's the colorful slide right here. Okay, so that in the official plan, this is designated residential. So the official plan has designations. There's various designations across the city that determine what type of land use goes in. So anything that's designated residential, um, there can be residential development. The zoning comes in place and makes it um, more specific. So it'll be like residential 18 meter front lot, at medium density. So that the zoning bylaw is the vehicle that allows the types of buildings to go on and the official plan designations determine the types of use. So it just breaks it down. And as we can see here, um, the, this area is, is permitted in the residential designation. So that will be residential development. And it, to the green, to the, to the right, is a core natural designation, which has also been, um, it has its own zone, which had an amendment to only allow wetlands and, um, and water water related. Uh, so that, that area will never be developed. So um, I did get a email earlier today, actually about 4.15. I would like to read it. Um, it is from a resident and it, it says follows. Uh, questions and or comments to raise that meeting. Due to high volume of residential homes in and around Conklin and Sheltered Lane, Conklin Road becoming high traffic of vehicles and pedestrians. Pedestrians, especially children, walking and running across Conklin from the subdivision off Conklin Road, to and from school to the shopping plaza, riding bikes, many times pedestrian, especially children, nearly 
collided with speeding, reckless driving, or very loud noised motorists. I, I'm, I'm reading this verbatim. Have the city taken this into consideration due to the roadway very close to private homes and family and nearby schools? This is serious and need to take measures to slow the motorists from excessive speeding. Otherwise, tragedy can occur and the city face adverse consequences. Safety and peace to the residents, family along Conklin Avenue, especially as it does build in a subdivision, should be treated as the side street. The long, smooth stretch of roadway encourages speeding, breaking traffic lights, and other danger. Two, is there going to be another access main road to allow closer access to highway to avoid bottlenecks with the excessive residential and other homes and condos, etc.? Thank you for sharing and giving answers to the above concerns. Thank you on behalf of the present residents. So I've explained the, um, the city policies and, and the um, official plan, the zoning, the Ontario legislation that enables and requires us to have a public meeting. Um, so the next steps, this will be going to planning committee. Um, it's looking at going to planning committee in December that's a tentative date. And sometime in 2023, it will be going to council. Um, so on that note, that concludes the city of Brantford's uh, presentation re regarding these, this development and this rezoning. I would like to actually, uh, I guess, move this on to the next, next section where uh, Cesar Patelli will be presenting on behalf of Armstrong. Thank you. Thanks, Blaine. Um, I think I'm just gonna share my screen here or, oh, there you go. All right, so uh, good evening, everyone, uh, to the councillors, staff, and uh, any residents who may be present or watching. Uh, my name is Cesar Patelli. As Blaine said, I am from Armstrong Planning. We're the agent on behalf of Empire. Uh, so if we could just uh, jump right into it here, we can move along to the next slide. Uh, Blaine stole most of my presentation, so I'll try and keep it uh, uh, as simple as possible and try not to repeat too much. Um, so the site is is located on the west side of Conklin, just south of Shellard. Um, you can see here that we've we've provided a context map. Uh, we, you know, just labeling uh, to show, I guess, compatibility with the surrounding uses in the area. Uh, you'll see that uh, uh, to the east, south of the site, there's already an existing townhouse subdivision that's already been developed and zoning is in place. And as, as Blaine mentioned, there's a, a, a separation line that goes through the property and on the property closest to that townhouse block, uh, I believe that was rezoned to the, the same zoning, which would be R4A-46, uh, which already permits street townhouses. And on the other side of that block, that long skinny strip, uh, it's R1A, which only permits single detached dwellings. So what we're trying to do here is rezone the entire property to permit block townhouses, and that would be in the R4A zone. So we will be taking uh, that strip of land out of the R R1 zone and putting it into the R4 zone. Um, to the north of the property at the corner of Shellard and Conklin, you'll see that it's slated for mid-rise mixed use. Um, you'll see a block of open space at the rear of the property, um, Assumption College across the street and the Winfield East and the remaining Winfield West lands as well. Uh, so if we can move along to the next slide. So this is the proposed site plan. Um, the site is a total of 1.09 hectares. 
uh, we're proposing lot widths of five meters and lot areas of 110 square meters. There's a total of 43 units. Um, we're proposing 86 resident parking spaces, one on a driveway and one in an internal garage. And you'll see that we've created a little zoom capture on the site plan just to show how the parking is, is going to work uh, from, a, I guess, the resident's perspective. Uh, there will also be 25 visitor parking spaces at grade, and you will see them labeled on the site plan in three separate uh, locations. Uh, so if we can move along to the next slide. So this slide here, again, uh, as Blaine already mentioned, shows the existing zoning that's in place. Again, R1A and R4A-46, which again is the same zoning as the existing townhouses that are already in place. And if we can move along. So uh, we've taken the liberty of, of just uh, creating a zoning chart here to show the current zones and the, uh, the proposed zoning for the site. And uh, you'll notice that, uh, again, in the gray on the right-hand side is what's being proposed. And I can go through them, uh, each individual one quickly. Um, again, it'll be 110 square meters per unit for lot area, five meters per unit for the lot width. Uh, the lot coverage, as with the existing R4A-46 zone, is not applicable here. The building height, again, not applicable. It'll be in compliance at three stories. Uh, for the front yard, again, we'll be in compliance. It's six meters to the garage. And actually, it's exceeding what's existing in the R4A-46 zone. It'll be 4.5 meters to a habitable room with the porch encroachment uh, of up to 2.5 meters. Uh, the rear yard setbacks are being slightly reduced due to the irregular shape of the, of the property. We'll, those will be reduced from 7 meters and 7.5 meters, respectively. Uh, as the existing down to six meters. Uh, side yards, uh, interior obviously being attached units will have zero meter setbacks. Interior end units at 1.5 meters and exterior were um, uh, exceeding uh, what's already permitted in the current zones and bringing that up to 3.85 meters. The gross floor area being proposed is 70 square meters. Landscaped open space, uh, again, consistent with the current zones is not applicable here. Um, amenity space is consistent with the existing R4A-46 zone at nine square meters per unit, and that'll be private outdoor amenity space. And the parking is in compliance with what the bylaw requires for block townhouse units at 1.5 spaces per unit. And the writing down at the bottom of this table um, are just for por uh, porch and stair encroachments uh, for, the, uh, for the individual units. And you will see our proposed zoning map to the left and again, we'll be changing it to bring the entire property, both parcels into the R4A zone. So if we can move along to the next slide. These are just uh, some renderings uh, that were submitted and this will give you a general idea of what the development is gonna look like. Uh, it's a contemporary style. Um, there were a couple, a couple of different uh, color palettes that were chosen. And um, again, this is just to, to give a very uh, general understanding of what it's going to look like. If we can move along to the next slide. Uh, this, this slide here is just to give a, a little more context uh, to what we're talking about. This is the entire Winfield West subdivision that's already 
uh, that's, I guess, mostly approved and, and in place. Um, and you'll see at the on the right hand side towards the top are the subject lands that are dashed in red. Uh, that is the site in question tonight. And we've uh, developed a, a color-coded legend here just to, again, provide a little more context to the surrounding uses. And you'll see, again, face the phase 6A, which is the orange phase right below the subject lands are already townhouses. Um, and the lands right at the corner of Shellard and Conklin are slated for mixed use mid rise with green space surrounding it at the rear. Um, so if we can move along, and that actually concludes the the very simple presentation without um, repeating too much of what Blaine said, and I'll be happy to take any questions. And uh, just so everyone is aware. I do have uh, John Castro with me from Empire tonight. If there are any questions that are directed uh, directly towards Empire, thank you. Thank you, Caesar. I just want to interject one, one, or very quickly. When I explained R4A, that means residential medium density, and that allows uh, facilitation of such structures and, and types of dwellings that is planned. Thank you. Okay, so Blaine and Caesar, we have two attendees attending virtually. Um, our first uh, resident for a question is Adita. You can go ahead with your question, please. Uh, hi, uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, I actually recently moved into this neighborhood and there were many differences in this property. We were told that. Excuse uh, me, Adia, could you maybe speak up a little bit? Um, you, you're mumbled. Can, is it better now? Um, it still is a little mumbled. Maybe it's your speaker. Uh, uh, is it better now? Yes, I can hear you now. Thank you. Uh, hello. Yep, we can hear you. Okay. Go ahead with your question, please. Yes, yeah, so I was saying that we recently purchased this property uh, in our uh, 46 area. So that is on the Butcher Crescent. Uh, and we were informed that uh, the, this area that is being rezoned uh, will, uh, there, there will be no con new construction happening on this area. And this will remain as like maybe for recreational purposes. So I just wanted to check if that was correct. Unfortunately, we can't understand you. Uh, I think I'm speaking on behalf of all of us. It's just it's just somewhat difficult. And as Diane was saying, it's it's uh, mumbled. So I'm sorry. Could you? I I didn't. I, I don't think any of us got enough of that question to be able to answer. It. So if you could. Uh, Hi, Aditya. This is uh, the IT support person here. Just to let you know, it's not that you are mumbled, it's that I think your internet connection might be weak and your signal keeps fading out. Mm, okay, okay. Wow. Never mind, that's okay. I'll let it pass. If you can, if you would like, um, you can send us an email, um, state your name, in your address, um, because anybody that that comments is required to do that, and then we can. Um, what we could do is, is, is if based upon your name, give us your email, and then we could send you an email, and and you could uh, express that and your concerns in writing. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Blaine. Uh, we have another attendee with a question, uh, Shweta Sharma. If you go ahead with your question, please. Hi, good evening. Oh, can you hear me properly? Yeah. 
Yes. Okay, so I am Aditya's wife. It's the same question that he was talking about. Actually, we recently purchased this house at Butcher Crescent, and uh, we were told that there would be no construction behind our uh, our house. It's uh, in front of Assumption School. So is that the case that now there will be houses built on this land because it's it's not very well maintained right now, and there are rats and other animals that comes very often and it's we feel that it's not safe in our backyard uh yeah i, I guess blaine i can answer this um yeah if, if if you're talking about uh if if you're backing onto this property then yes there there will be a uh, new development i'm not sure who told you that there wouldn't be but uh, yes, that is the uh, the lands in question. And when is it expected to be uh, started? We're hoping that uh, house construction will be starting towards the uh, second half of uh, 2023. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. It is quite possible maybe you had... Uh, we're referring to the area to um, there, there, there is an area that will not be developed. And that's the area that uh, was earlier um, designated in green. That's the core natural de designation. And the reason for that, the city makes an assessment over different types of, of, of lands and sensitivity and all that. And it was determined through studies that, that the core air, natural areas are areas that are of critical either habitat or wetland or or woodland and um, they're they're destined to stay that way okay thank you thank you um i guess is there anyone else that wishes to speak if they're not here i will ask that three three times uh, is there anybody else um, virtually that would like to speak? May I say a few words before we depart? Absolutely, Councillor Scully. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, thank Empire for their smart planning here. Um, you definitely exceeded the markers as far as what the city's expectation is for parking and amenity space. Um, and I just wanted to touch on um, just briefly the... Um, email that came in regarding traffic and, and speed, the speeding on Conklin. And um, trust me, I know I've been dropping daughters off at Assumption College for the last eight years, and I've definitely seen um, the difference from eight years ago versus now, just in that general area um, with dropping the kids off in the traffic there. Um, so for the resident that did reach out and express those concerns, those are also my concerns. Uh, we did have a neighborhood meeting recently about the traffic. I'm sorry, I know this has nothing to do specifically with this development, but um, the, you know, traffic is definitely something that comes up time and time again. So we had a neighborhood meeting, we have a, a plan in place for calming the traffic, um, and we're gonna be having another, another neighborhood meeting likely in November just to present that plan. So we, I just wanted to acknowledge that we, we hear you, um, we have an idea of the traffic that's going on there, and we have some measures that we're going to put in place to try to calm that down for everyone. So again, thank you to Empire for the very thorough uh, presentation and to our planning team. And I have no further comments because they've sort of done everything that we were going to be looking for anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything else you would like to say, Caesar? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, just to, I guess, touch on the uh, uh, the comments that you read earlier, um, I believe a traffic study was submitted with uh, with this uh, application, um, and I believe it's only proposed that a write in and write out to this uh, uh, to this site. So, um, in terms of traffic calming, I mean, we're doing what we can on our end. Um, but unfortunately, we have no power to uh, to do much else, such as add speed bumps or change speed limits. So, okay, thank you, um, uh, Councilor Coley. Do you have anything else to add? I think you said you didn't. 
No, I think I've chatted over oh, okay, Thank um, you. Well, then hearing uh, nothing else, I would um, have to say thank you very much. Um, and I, I do thank you for the questions um, and the email submitted to the planning department. These are definitely things that we do consider and um, evaluate whenever we have a planning application. So I guess on that note, I will adjourn the meeting um, at 7.30 exactly. Uh, I, I thank everybody and uh, have a good night.